Hello everybody, how are you all doing? This time we're gonna focus on a different topic than the last video. This time we're gonna talk a lot more about teamfights because last video we addressed how you are supposed to play in lane. But what happens when you actually focus on teamfights? What happens when you want to perform on teamfights, alright? So this video is gonna be all about that. Especially with the one before that we do later in game. All right. So first of all, we are going to start with a little bit of lane phase, okay? Not fully lane phase, but a little bit of lane phase. Why is that? Because in order to carry team fights, in order to be able to have enough damage, to have enough mobility or enough tools to perform in team fights, you need to play the lane phase properly, all right? It's just a step by step. That's all. That's how it works, all right? So first of all, it's just difficult, difficult lane phase. Morgana is one of the most useless supports there is. No, no flame on this Morgana, it's just how the champion works. Then Barus is one of the hardest counter to Aphelios, if not the most difficult matchup that you have. So it's very hard to start this lane, but as you can tell, the focus here is just farming as much as possible and surviving. So I'm gonna skip a little bit with the lane. Because it's just very simple. Farming, farming, punishing, farming, farming, farming. Now, how do we take an HP advantage? Okay, that's something that you may be asking. How do we actually take a HP advantage? Well, the first way to do this, and the most important one, is your first weapon rotation. Your first weapon rotation allows you to sever Q into cal into cal no severing Q into gravity Q into calibre Q. That's it. The only reason he doesn't get hit here is because he cleanses. But because he got hit by most of the most of it and also morgana performed there his lower hp now now his lower hp we are looking for the next step right turning that hp advantage into an overall advantage that is to say by denying minions by securing a kill by getting tempo a tempo or call by getting a cheater call anything anything that's worth right so use that by the way i'm not forcing here because even if i hit him uh, as long as uh, Renata plays that decently, she can just hit me with the CC and I'm done. I might also, now that I think about I could have tried to ghost. Yeah, I could have tried to ghost and hit them with Inferno Q. Bullets. Bullets, I mean. Yeah. And then when Renata uses the stun, I can flash over it. Yeah, that would have been better. I can probably secure a kill there. Nonetheless. Getting that HP advantage allows me to push the wave and try cold and come with item advantage, of course. I'm going Stone Razor because this this matchup is very difficult and this is a little bit tricky that I have talked a lot in the past. If you want to carry matches, you need ghosts, bro. You need ghosts 100%. If you don't have a ghost, game is going to be hard. Really, really hard. And because of that, you cannot just pick cleans i know cleans is good especially in a scenario like this against a warwick against uh barus against renata it's very very good cleans is very very good but i cannot afford to do it now here it's just paying attention to the map pay attention to young rotating both side you just step up root easy like no big deal no mechanic no mechanics otherwise but like I was saying, if you want to carry more matches, you need Ghost, bro. bro ghost is the breaking point. Ghost is what allows you to carry way, way more matches than usual, alright? Now, here's another thing, and something that might seem a little bit bad, but I think is decent. Maybe I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. That I decided to push that wave, get a plate, and then after that, only after that, I decided to fight Drake. Now here I wanted to kill Warwick first because he's really easy to kill if Jax gets out of the pit and helps me kill him. And then we can turn around and get, get the rest or just run away. But it doesn't happen. We end up losing Drake. Terrible. But at least by doing this, I make a play where I don't lose win maybe or I don't lose lose this is a play where I win win either I get ahead by the minions and the plate or I go and get a drake and maybe get a kill against Warwick and I got the kill and I got ahead with the plates and the minions right that is why I considered 
the best decision that you can make always is the more consistent decision. The more consistent decision will give you the highest win rate. And the one who gives, and the one which gives the highest win rate in this scenario is pushing the wave, crashing the wave under the tower and getting that plate. And then afterwards going to hell with Drake. Because that fight on Drake depends on your team performing in order to, to play that properly. Also, there are some instances where I consider it's better to prioritize the Drake and just give up the way, especially with Mountain Drake. Mountain Drake is one of the most important Drake series, just because of the resistances that gives are insanely high and, and allow you to stack into Laken very, very easily. Especially Aphelios gets a lot of that, those resistances because it allows you to pick different types of items without being that punish, like with Zen or an early Guardian Angel. Nonetheless, we just keep pushing here, just short trades as you can tell. He just QR into making sure that he gets slow. I cannot, I cannot afford to get a kill here. But since this is the only instance that I have to use QR, I just take it. I 100% take it. Alright? Because on that max range, following CC is so easy to hit QR and the damage is too much. Too much. Now I'm just looking for to, to get a plate, be very chill here, and I see that Renata levels up, level, levels up to level 6 right there, pay attention. She's about to level up to level 6, level six, and then I don't commit anymore, because I could look for a kill there with auto attack, inferno, Q, and into graviton, right? That's a kill. But then afterwards, I'm just gonna get into the tower, because Renata is gonna use R on me and I might die. Now, Another thing here is why I consider fl Fleet being so good, because Fleet allows you to catch enemies of war. Like, look at this, I use an auto attack on the minions to get that extra speed to close the gap between me and Varus and hit him with auto attack Inferno Q, Graviton Q, which allows me to punish him very easy and, and kill him. Why I'm capable of doing that? Because I'm paying attention to my fleet, alright? Now, another thing here, I just goes right away because I don't wanna... I don't want to get hit by Warwick max range R. So as soon as I see him, I'm ghosting either to run away or turn around if he decides not to die me. And because he takes too much time making decisions, she, he ends up being stunned by Morgana R. What he might have tried to do is change the Morgana R with his unstoppable because when Warwick is using ultimate, he becomes stoppable. He failed to do so which is fine, and then he just dies, all right? He just dies. Easy kill, easy kill. And Ghost was very important there too, because otherwise we just don't run away. He just goes straight up for us and kills us. Ghost is such a vital summoner in order for you to counter-engage, in order for you to re-engage, in order for you to all play enemies. Very, very vital summoner, all right? So now, we keep going with lane phase, and now, like I said before, you get advantage. And this advantage, you need to translate that into winning team fights. All right? How do you translate that into winning team fights? Well, thinking ahead, how you're gonna play team fights. Now, I'm not relying on my Morgana E to save me. It's just dumb. That's not gonna happen ever. The only time I will rely on my Morgana E to save me is when Morgana E is already on top of me. All right? So I'm thinking right now I need a way to be able to deal with that much CC that they have because I thought I really need greens but I really need to deal with that CC otherwise I'm just gonna be useless. How do I do this? Well, Mercurial Scimitar. I have tried Mercurial Scimitar a couple of times and I, I, I can tell you brother, Mercurial Scimitar is so powerful. It's actually a decent second item if you really need it that is. Another thing here, for example, is just paying attention to your win, to your win condition. I have very strong weapons. I'm trying to to bait him into going full dive on me. And when I know he's dead, I just flash away to make sure that he doesn't get the the HP reset, right? The life, the life HP reset. Now, another thing here, like I said before, is very important to pay attention to your storm racer stacks because your storm racer stacks and your fleet stack is the thing that will allow you to reach challenger. Look at this. I don't try to tunnel vision into Renata. I'm paying attention to my fleet stacks, to my Sun Racer stacks. And when I see my Sun Racer stacks are at 100, what's going to happen here is that I hit the closest minion to me and use that extra move speed to catch Renata. You see? 
and lost his turn. Otherwise, if I just run straight up, I'm not gonna catch her ever because I don't have the extra move speed to, to run her down. All right. So this this is very very important, and I say that this is gonna help you reach reach challenger because challenger at the end of the day is just an amount of a lot, yeah, a big amount of small details that allow you to overperform more, outperform your enemies. That is to say, just making less mistakes and just doing better things, right? Better, little details, little mistakes that you avoid, little things that you get. That's it. It's just the sum of all that. Now I'm, I get the tower. John decides to go bot. I just grab mid. Just grab mid. Keep farming, respecting, respecting Maltahar, and I decide to take to take Herald because everybody's looking to bot. I, I just give up my my mid wave and go straight out for Herald. Now here is a little bit tricky because I might say I perform decently but I make mistakes and this is one of the mistakes why I will presume I'm not challenger 1000 LP right I'm just challenger 100 and 100 LP because sometimes I just go too deep sometimes I just see the kill and I stop thinking and make mistakes like for example here I should have just followed into Warwick and just kill him Instead of trying to go for this guy and missing my ult. And then he, what, what does he do? He just flashes R. Flash R and I get played. Dead. Terrible, terrible. Like I said before, you don't need to be perfect to, to climb up. You just need to make a way less mistake than your enemies. Proof of that is here. Me making a very, very bad mistake, alright? Baited by Bronze, Brazil and Malzahar. My boy Renan saying over there. And it's completely true, dude. I got baited very hard because of a very dumb mistake. Nonetheless, we are going Gelfords and we are looking now for Mercurial Scimitar. Warwick is just doing Warwick stuff. I'm not going Kraken Slayer now because I cannot afford to go in a situation like this. Some Razor into Kraken, into Gelfords, into Mercurial Scimitar. If I did not need Mercurial Scimitar, then I might consider going going cracking in this match all right but it's not like that it's not like that at all like for example here if i have my morgana shield from the very beginning i can 1v3 that are very easy but i don't have it not gonna complain it is what it is you simple team fight like for example let's break down this team fight okay let's break down this team fight very quickly it's kind of team fight kind of not the thing that you can kill you here is Maltahar ultimate, Varus ultimate. Now I'm just max ranging, max ranging, max range, max range, Maltahar ultimate. Okay, let's go. I can just hit. Now, why is the thing, next thing that can kill me? Renata ultimate and them just auto me, right? Just autos actually kill me. So what I'm doing here is making sure that I space max range because when Varus kills a target, he increases his attack speed so much, so, so much, especially he's a, he's a champion. I need to respect his auto attacks. I really need to respect his auto attacks. Like for example, here is another random thing where Maltagar is respecting me. But like I said before, team fights, how you perform on team fights is just a simple, very, very, very simple thing. You need to think ahead how you're gonna play the team fight. That's how you perform in team fights. I'm gonna show you very soon an example of how do you perform in team fights and support of how you do not perform in team fights because it happens here. Now I'm just front to back as a rule. Front to back, easy peasy, follow, nothing else to see. Now we have Mercurial Scimitar and we have Ghosts. We have every counter, every counter for every thing that they can do. And because of that, I'm not afraid of fighting here. I'm not afraid of fighting at all. Gladly, my Morgana uses E for once. And I know that I don't have to be afraid of Renata ultimate again. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you from now on everything that goes on my mind. Okay. First of all. Being careful with Renata ultimate. Okay, not Renata ultimate. I need to think about Baros ultimate, and I and I need to kite Rafiri. Kiting, kiting. They are close. I cannot let them flank me. If they flank me, I just die. So I can fight only one enemy at once, never the four of them at the same time. 
So I'm kiting, I'm kiting, I'm kiting, and because he is in a spot, because Barus, look at that, pay a lot of attention to Barus positioning. Barus gets into a very terrible spot where he is unable to dodge anything. When Barus is sitting there, when Barus is standing there next to the wave, I mean next to the wall, there is no way he can dodge any, any skill shot. I only need to hit him a little bit to the right, close to the middle of the path, and a little bit close to the to the wall that is to say even if he moves sideways he's not gonna be able to dodge and because i know that i use spam qr because with qr i know i can one shot him and also because i know i need to scimitar and cleanse very quick whichever cc comes close to me as soon as he ccs me i'm just running away so they don't get a chance to get close to me then afterwards I'm gonna I'm gonna follow on what they, on their on their push using turrets to avoid them chasing me. Turret, Malzahar, Malzahar, Malzahar. Easy. Now there is nothing I need to be afraid of besides the fear. Now, what are we gonna fear? Easy. You see what I mean? Also, there is a bug here, right? There is a bug. The calibre on Q. Look at my mouse. Look at my mouse, bro. Look at my mouth. What is he casting over there, dude? Oh my god. Yeah, whatever. Let's look let's look at the team fight very quickly. Very quickly now, alright? And try to pay attention to every single thing that goes on. Okay. From now on. Alright. As soon as Renata starts with the ultimate. Okay. From now. Calibron Q makes me laugh so much. Anyway, guys, as you can tell, it's just it's not having crazy mechanics, right? It's not at all. It's just thinking ahead. What are what are you doing? What do you wanna do in the team fight? How are you gonna counter their main strengths? That is scimitar. That is gale force. That is mispositioning with QR that is following with sentries every single thing you need to think how are you gonna play the team fight before playing it all right that's the only way and it's so easy to do you don't need insane mechanics to do this at all you just need to start thinking way more on how you want to play the team fights all right that's it nothing else now the thing here is we don't do that that often okay there is yeah we, why we don't do that often because performing is easy being mentally ready to do this kind of stuff being mindful about this kind of stuff it is hard it is difficult it is very very easy to go autopilot mode in the middle of the game and start just going out of meat it's very easy to do that and this happens to me now in this team fight how do how does this happen because i do not react properly to the Malzahar art you see i take like half a second to react to the Malzahar art and that is bad that is bad because if i make one mistake here if my darius wasn't good enough if Barus was a little bit more fed we lose this we definitely lose this fight and it might not look like that at the moment, but if you pay close attention to the Master Harar and my cleans, you can tell that it's not instant and my gale force was useless there. And because of that, I'm not performing perfectly, alright? That is bad. Not reacting properly, that is bad. Now, when you look at the team fight that we had with Barus, with Barus QR, when I cleans Barus Ultimate, that was way, way faster. And that little bit of space allowed me to survive that one before and win it. Now here, it might seem like I did the right play. It might seem like I played that good, but I did not. Okay, I did not play that good. 
And I can tell you 100% certain of that because those little mistakes might look good, but they are going to end up hindering your performance. And you can only follow this little rule, right? That it turns out good. Even if it turns out good, it does not mean that you did the right call there, okay? That's why I consider it so difficult to improve if you don't have anyone to teach you or anyone to coach you. So, that's why I'm making videos. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a member, a Crescendo member, and you're gonna get coached every time, one time a month, alright? Thank you, thank you so much for watching guys, thank you, thank you, and I hope this is useful for you, and see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, thank you.